Hamilton the Musical has finally arrived on Disney+, Plus, bringing the much-loved cultural phenomenon right into our homes in glorious HD. And packed into the revolutionary stage production are tons of incredible details that even some ardent Hamill fans may have missed. yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing 22 crucial things that will make you love the Hamilton movie even more. Jonathan Groff's deliciously fun performance of King George's breakup song, You'll Be Back, is a great comic moment. And the British monarch's very particular walk when he first arrives on stage has a curious origin which Groff attributes to the incredibly heavy crown he initially had to wear in the role. Adding to the difficulty of his stage entrance was that Groff had to balance the weighty headpiece while advancing forward in heels one foot in front of the other as if walking on a tightrope, all while wearing an incredibly thick and heavy royal gown. The song's cheery sensibility and musical style, which is a clever hat tip to the Beatles and the 60s British Invasion, deliberately contrasts with the rest of the musical to show how King George is intruding on events. The song also squeezes in some neat references to both the Boston Tea Party and the King's future mental illness. And funnily enough, the track's inspiration came from British actor Hugh Laurie, who Lin-Manuel Miranda worked with previously. When Miranda explained he was writing a breakup letter from King George to the colonies, Laurie wagged his finger and said, ah, you'll be back. A detail that many fans didn't miss in the Hamill film is the profuse amount of spit that emerges from King George as he threatens his ex-colonial subjects. And now, don't change the subject! Now, some might have thought it was a nod to the King's insanity later in life, but it's actually because Jonathan Groff is a spitter whenever he performs on Broadway. In an interview with Variety, Groff explained, I've always been a spitter. I start sweating. I just get wet when I perform on stage. It's just what happens. Interestingly, when this production of Hamilton was filmed back in June 2016, Groff was no longer playing King George. So Rory O'Malley, the actor who'd taken over the role, very nobly stood down so Groff could temporarily reign once more, and the film crew could capture the magic of the original Broadway cast together again. And that's why you'll see O'Malley's name pop up in the special thanks during the movie's credits. Satisfied is one of the musical's most popular numbers, in particular thanks to Renee Elise Goldsberry's breathtaking delivery of some incredibly fast lines. So this is what it feels like to match wits with someone at your level, what the hell is the catch is? And the innovative way the song pauses time, then rewinds, is also a perfect setup for time stopping later in the show when Aaron Burr fires his gun in his duel with Hamilton. But one of the most intriguing things about watching the Hamill film versus seeing the show live in the theatre is that the way the movie is shot and edited creates a different experience. When editing Satisfied for the movie, director Thomas Kale revealed they could be more subjective with the camera, so it feels like we're going inside Angelica's brain. The cut pattern is quite accelerated and the camera angles are quite varied. So for me, watching at home, what this does is that it creates a real sense of the confusion Angelica feels as she deals with her conflicting emotions. Emotions. Kale also added that this cinematic technique of rapidly cutting between different perspectives is similar to how the song breaks the form of the theatrical language in the theatre. By the way, the movie's edited with footage from recordings of two live performances together with a third day when the cast was filmed in an empty theatre to get all those great close-up shots. Oh, and if you watch very closely, you may spot the odd tiny continuity error. For example, in Satisfied, the flowers on Angelica's dress are sometimes present, while other times they just disappear as the film switches between footage from different days. A sweet reminder that Hamilton was made by human geniuses and not robots. Hamilton isn't just a musical about a revolution, its musical style is also revolutionary in terms of musical theatre because it packs such an incredible number of words into its two and a half hour story. Writer Leia Libresco calculated the speed of the show's songs and discovered the fastest ones clocked in at an amazing 200 words per minute, with an overall average of 144 words per minute. Goldsbury expertly delivers 121 words in just 24 seconds for Angelica's fastest verse in Satisfied. The conversation lasted two minutes, maybe three minutes, everything we said in total is three minutes, and three minutes, a bit of a dance. While in Guns and Ships, David Diggs squeezes 19 words into just three seconds. <laughs> In fact, Labresco found that if Hamilton was sung at the pace of other comparable Broadway shows, it would run for somewhere between four and six hours. 
Another example of Miranda playing with tempo is the opening number, which recounts the first two decades of Alexander Hamilton's life. The song runs at a steady pace as the protagonist is introduced, but when Hamilton discovers the way out of his predicament is to double down on his education, the tempo of the rap picks up, doubling in speed. It's not just the speed of the songs in Hamilton that's fascinating though, but also as David Diggs pointed out, Miranda has each character perform in a different style. For example, George Washington raps in a very metronomic way, which is similar to how he thinks, all right on beat. Now I'm the model of a modern major general, the venerated Virginian veteran. And Diggs's character Lafayette progresses from a simple 80s rap cadence at first. I dream of life without a monarchy. The unrest in France will lead to anarchy. And by the end, he's rapping in double and triple time. So he knows what to do when a trench ingenuity is fluent in French, I mean. Actors try to put themselves in the shoes of their characters, so Chris Jackson, who plays George Washington, wrestle with the fact that Washington was a slave owner and that the country's first president, along with the other founding fathers, failed to abolish slavery when they created the Union. In the book Hamilton the Revolution, Jackson says that it didn't keep him from getting to the heart of who Washington was and trying to betray the truth in that. And he even found a way to address this conflict in the musical. At the very end, when Eliza sings that Hamilton would have done more to end slavery if he'd lived longer, watch Jackson just behind her carefully, and notice how he bows his head in shame, which was his way for Washington to accept responsibility for what he did and didn't do. By the way, Alexander Hamilton's anti-slavery credentials have been questioned by some historians who say the musical paints him in an overly positive light, something I go into in detail in my Hamilton fact or fiction video. Links will be here and in the video description as soon as it's ready. The musical set design is also packed with lots of details that reflect both the pre- and post-revolutionary era of the United States. As Hamilton's creative director and designer David Corrins has explained, this is the story of the people who built the scaffolding upon which the country was built. So you see wooden period scaffolding up around a half-made wall to show a kind of aspirational space, giving it the feel of a colonial era building under construction. And during the musical's intermission, the brick walls get bigger, growing eight feet taller, to represent the continuous work being done on the country, and how the foundation is growing. By the way, fun fact, those brick walls aren't brick at all, but a pressed pattern board that's then cut up and treated with goop and texture, paint and layers of distressing on top. Corrins has also said that the use of turntables on the stage is inspired by the whirlwind of history that sweeps up Hamilton, as well as the literal hurricane that hits the Caribbean island where he was born. And it also matches the cyclical relationship between Aaron Burr and Hamilton, where they were basically spiralling around each other their entire careers and lives. Like the line, immigrants, we get the job done, which always gets huge applause in the theatre, the show's set design also has its own way of honouring the immigrants that helped build America. Corrins has said that since many immigrants arrived via boat, they wanted to feature nautical elements in their set designs, which is why there's lots of ropes and pulleys, and the wooden structures are built using the same elements used in shipbuilding of the era. The show's choreography also plays a crucial part in creating subtle effects to complement the story at any particular time. For example, when Hamilton arrives in Helpless, both Angelica and Eliza are positioned along his line of sight, and in this moment he locks eyes with Eliza. When the moment is rewound and satisfied, Hamilton's position switches over, and this time he's looking at Angelica. The direction in which the turntable moves also communicates a subtle meaning. For choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler, counterclockwise motion like that in Helpless suggests time passing. The opposite direction, however, implies there is resistance to the inevitable going on, which is why the turntable reverses its motion during Satisfied. Blankenbuehler explains that many in the audience won't consciously register his choices like the fact that Burr moves in straight lines because he sees no options, and Hamilton moves in arcs because he sees all possibilities, but viewers still feel it intuitively. Again, this small detail helps to communicate the difference in worldview of two of the most important characters in the show. Now, Hamilton the movie doesn't exactly have a post credit scene, but there is a little bonus for anyone who sticks around to the very end of the 10 minute long credits. In the film's final two minutes, you get to hear the exit music, which is a medley of Hamilton songs that isn't on the official soundtrack. This musical piece is a jam session recorded live with most of the original band members, which plays for the audience as they leave the theatre and is a delight for any Hamilton fans who haven't had the pleasure of hearing this until the movie came out. 
and check out the special thanks part of the credits and you'll see Lin-Manuel Miranda's included all the curious places he wrote Hamilton over the years, including the A-Train where he wrote Wait For It, Hamilton's birthplace Nevis where he composed non-stop, and On His Honeymoon where he wrote You'll Be Back. Of course, one of the joys of Hamilton arriving on Disney Plus is that not only can Hamilton fans watch it on repeat, but those of us who couldn't experience it live can finally see the much talked about musical. But even now, Disney Plus or other streaming services like Netflix or YouTube are sometimes blocked in the country where you live, which is why I want to thank the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. A VPN or virtual private network helps you bypass geo restrictions or censorship on content not available to view in your country. With a VPN, you can just pick a server in another location and browse the internet as if you were there. Here at Flicks in the City, we've tested several VPNs and Nord is one of the best and fastest. It has over 5,000 servers to choose from in over 60 countries, and when connected to Nord, we were still able to get blisteringly fast download speeds. A VPN also helps protect your privacy by encrypting your internet connection and preventing your ISP, government agencies or malicious hackers, from reading your emails, private messages or knowing which websites you're visiting. Unlike many free VPNs, Nord has a no-log policy meaning it doesn't record or retain details of your online activity when you're connected to its service. NordVPN also works with Netflix, Disney Plus and other TV streaming services like Amazon Prime to help you connect to those and work around geo restrictions. For a limited time, NordVPN are offering all our viewers up to 70% off new subscriptions. Just visit nordvpn.com flicks or tap the link in the video description to access the offer. So what are your favourite moments and songs in Hamilton? And did you notice any other interesting details? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Tap left to learn about everything the musical changed about the real history of Alexander Hamilton, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. And thanks so much to all of you for helping me reach a million subscribers since I last uploaded. I really hope you're all keeping safe during these tough times. Thanks again for watching and see you next time. yippee ki movie lovers!